We had a couple date nights. I remember we had a couple beers and I brought my laptop and we went through, okay, brainstorm all of the things that are unknown. Had a full-time job, part-time job that I, I left and then now I've transitioned into cybersecurity. One thing that we really wanted to do is not make any changes right away because we wanted to see how we use the space. Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Seth. Come and take a tour. Welcome to our kitchen. Having a big sink to be able to wash our dishes was key. I almost find it relaxing. You put in your headphones, do the dishes for the day, and then they, are, you, they dry overnight and you put them away in the morning. Here we have a three burner stove. Typically we cook on our Blackstone outside, but on any windy day, or if it's really cold in the morning like it is right now, uh, we typically cook on here. My very first project, the very first uh, renovation that we did in here was adjusting this backsplash. So I actually just ordered this from Amazon. It's just flexible backsplash and it's worked great. I mean, it's getting a lot of use because it's in a kitchen, but we haven't had any problems with it peeling. One thing that sold me on this RV is all of the storage. So up here we've got coffee, we've got extra baggies. Then up here we've got like mixing bowls. And then we've got three drawers in the front here. We've got our utensils, plates, bowls. We have a Dometic fridge that runs off of propane or electricity. When we're boondocking, like right now, it's running off of propane. I love the size of our fridge. It works out really well for us too. Most of our food is fresh, so it has to hold a lot for us. The freezer holds plenty of meat for us uh, for, I don't know, two weeks, something like that. Welcome to our side deck, uh, kitchen, and just lounge area. So as you can see here, we have the Blackstone. That is our primary cooking area. The awning overhead here, if it's raining, keeps us dry. Uh, I can handle a little bit of cooler temperatures if need be while we're cooking, so no problem there. One thing we really like about the side deck is the sliding patio door between the deck and the garage, and then the kitchen inside is right there as well. So it's really a short trip to go in between all of that when we are cooking, um, and that's very handy. Welcome to our living room. This RV has one slide, so this whole section comes in all the way, brings the couch all the way to the door there. You could take a nap on here and actually these all recline and these three metal ones, the uh, top comes down so that you can have cup holder and set some things here. One thing that we really wanted to do is not make any changes right away. Live in it for a few months, see how we use the space. I didn't even buy any new decor when we first moved into it, even though I really wanted to, because we wanted to see how we use the space. And I'm so happy that we did because we've got different ideas now than when we first started. At the RV show, we bought our trailer. We were able to pay right around 63,000 for the trailer. The truck was about 72,000. And then so far we've probably put an extra $4,000 in upgrades to the trailer. I had a full-time job, part-time job that I, I left, and then now I've transitioned into cybersecurity. So I can re work, work remotely for that. Um, Allie is also in tech, and she's had that job remote for the past five years or so. And then we had the money from selling the house was has been a big help as well. I know there's a lot of people out there that you know have a house, they keep it and they rent it out um, to be an additional revenue stream. That didn't work for our particular situation, but the sale of the house helped out a bit too. Welcome to our bathroom. This might look familiar. We use the same backsplash as in our kitchen. Throw up a picture frame here. What I've found for travel is that the little Velcro command strip and a little hook here works wonderfully. So we never have to take down any of our picture frames when we travel. We added a couple other touches. I added this little bar here that just sticks on to hold our towel. I added a little toilet paper holder, um, added a couple hooks for our towels. We've got tons of storage down here. I actually take up this entire cupboard with my hair stuff, my uh, face cloths, my toiletries, um, and then Seth and I share this cabinet, which has a bunch more storage in it. 
one of the things that sold us about this camper is how tall the shower is. Seth is 6'4", so it was very important to have a shower that would comfortably fit him. For us too, this bathroom works great. Uh, we can both comfortably brush our teeth uh, at the same time if we need to. Um, we do only have the one bathroom, but it works for us. Welcome to our bedroom. Try to make it as cozy and calm as possible. The only thing that we have changed is we swapped out the mattress that came with the RV to a, I think it's a Brooklyn bedding mattress and it's a real thick one. So it's very comfortable. I know some people like to remove that shelf there. I've never had a problem with hitting my head on it. I like the extra space. We just keep some books and a couple cords up there. I am a big fan of having a lot of clothes. So this storage in this uh, bedroom actually works out really well for us. We each have our own hanging space on either side. So this is Seth's side, that's my side. And then we have in these cabinets up here, several bins holding different clothing items. One thing I've found for organization, find a bin that has a lot of flexibility, not a hard sided, but more of a soft kind of cloth type of bin because then you can kind of shove them in there a little bit. They can uh, sit together real nicely. In this cabinet, there is a ton of storage. Another reason why we liked this RV. Down here, uh, Seth actually added a shelf so that we could utilize the storage a bit more since it's so tall. So in the back, we've got our two helmets for riding and we've got a little uh, roll of tools so that it's easily accessible for Seth. If you are new to RVing and you're doing this full time or you're living in a van or whatever your setup is, live in it for a while and try not to get frustrated with the current setup because you're gonna learn so much and you're gonna realize this is what I do need, this is what I don't need, and you can reorganize to make it fit your needs. We met um, 2020, end of 2020, and then Allie had brought up that she had plans of getting a van and doing the van life. Um, she put that on pause for a little bit, but <laughs> from there, the conversation, we just kept talking about it, and eventually, um, after getting married, it was, we really sat down and figured out how are we gonna make this work? We had a couple date nights. I remember very specifically, there was a brewery in, in the town that we lived at and I brought my laptop and we sat, we had a couple beers and we went through, okay, brainstorm all of the things that are unknown. I was full-time, two jobs, full-time and part-time. So I left both of those jobs, transitioned into uh, cybersecurity so I can work remotely doing that. Allie was remote with her job for the past five years, so that was a, an easy uh, choice there. Figure that out. What are we doing about our, ma our mail? Uh, how do you handle water? Um, how do you even decide what RV you wanna buy? What's our budget? All those things, we just kind of brainstormed. We didn't have to solve all those problems right then and there, but at least you have the problems on paper and you can figure them out one at a time. Welcome to our office slash spare bedroom and garage when we are traveling. So as you can see, we have our main office area set up here. This is primarily where I sit and work with the computer there. Uh, main right now is have a tower computer that's hidden underneath the bench there. Um, and it's double sided as you can see. Allie will work out here sometimes. We'll sit and have meals here as well. Tons of storage. We've got our uh, yoga mats, workout mats up there. We've got the crock pot up there, a couple odds and ends. This is a spare bed. Bring the benches up and then all that comes down together on a uh, Lipper Happy Jack system. The bed's about midway, and then the benches also can fold into another bed too. So potentially you have uh, a bunk system back here as well. So right now we have two 200 watt panels on the roof, 400 watts, and two 200 amp hour lithium batteries. The trailer came prepped for solar. What that meant was there was the roof gland on the roof, all the wiring through the walls down to here. And then all you have to do is install the inverter charge controller, solar panels on top. Um, and then I opted to swap out the battery that came stock for two lithium batteries. We're finding that the, um, the solar panels are just not quite enough to 
keep up and also recharge the batteries. So we're gonna go with two more solar panels on the roof, and then that should help out, especially in the, in the winter months when the sun angle is a bit lower. Little oh. advice for you if you're trying, if you're looking at this, wanting to get started, if you're on the fence, um, I like to steal from Nike and say, just do it. Writing down all the questions that you have, all of the unknowns, kind of as I said before, because once you get them on paper, you can you can tackle them one by one. It's a big change to sell your house, sell a lot of your belongings, put what's left in the storage unit, and make the transition to living in an RV. You do not have to have it all figured out by the time you get on the road. I remember there was a family of eight in a fifth wheel camper right down uh, down the row from us and they had what looked to be six kids under the age of seven. So if they can do it, you can probably do it. Yep. Thanks for watching our tour. If you want to follow along on our journey, you can find us on Instagram at Ryman's on the road, R-E-I-Man's on the road.